Well, the school year has either ended or is just wrapping up in most of the country. As another year finishes, there are still real concerns about learning loss dating back to the pandemic and the ongoing struggles for students to catch up. Laura Barone Lopez has our latest conversation on that subject. On the, the federal government gave schools $190 billion to help them reopen, recover, and respond to the impacts of the pandemic. That aid can be used for tutoring, adding teachers, summer learning, and other ways of helping. Some of that money has been spent for those purposes, but fears remain about the long-term impact of learning loss from remote schooling. Alec McGillis has been reporting on efforts to deal with this including in Richmond, Virginia, as part of a joint story for The New Yorker and ProPublica. He joins me now. You've reported extensively on the magnitude of learning loss and including in Richmond, Virginia, as well as other places across the country. How big is that gap? And is it among all students? The gap's just enormous. I mean, it's really kind of hard to, to for us to comprehend just how enormous this gap is. I've talked to a lot of experts in this field and they're just completely alarmed by how enormous the achievement gap has gotten, the disparities have gotten in this, these last couple of years. We've actually been very successful in this country in closing some of the racial and economic disparities in our schools in the last couple of decades. And they've just blown completely wide open over these last couple of years, largely because of the, the, the school closures and the shift to remote learning. There's just a lot of evidence now that the longer that a district stayed closed, the, the worse the learning loss was. And it just so happens that a lot of the districts that stay closed the longest were in, were in our cities and urban centers where you, where you have a lot, of, a lot of black students, a lot of Hispanic students who have now suffered um, by far the most from, from the, the shift to remote learning. You report that in some districts, schools are grading students more generously or giving them more opportunities to improve their grades. Does that mask the problem? It does. There's what, was, what one of the experts I spoke to called the urgency gap, where a lot of families, a lot of parents are not aware of just how dire the situation has become because they're seeing their kids still getting uh, decent grades um, because there's, there's been a general recognition among teachers that kids have, of course, been through a lot um, and that we should kind of, you know, take it somewhat easier on them as a result. And but meanwhile, you're seeing these standardized test scores that have just fallen off a cliff. Um, for a lot of lots of students in this country, really to a degree that that the researchers and economists have never seen before. Um, one economist describes this as as having just a massive economic effect on par with the Great Recession. Basically, because skills and learning in this country are so directly tied to income, you're going to see a lifelong effect for these students and the communities in which they live. Really, a lifelong loss to their economic well-being and livelihood. And you took a particular look at Richmond, Virginia, where the student body is nearly entirely Black, and there was a push for year-round schooling, essentially a 20-day, or sorry, a 200-day calendar. What was behind that push? What was behind that push is that a recognition that there's just been so much time lost and that the key, the real challenge now is finding additional time to, to make up some of that lost ground. Richmond schools stayed closed the longest of any uh, district in Virginia. The test scores reflected that. Um, one, one estimate is that students there lost two years in math, um, math learning. And so there's a big push to basically add time to the calendar, to somehow extend the school year, add more days to the school year for some students, um, and shrink the, the, the summer uh, vacation so that there's less of that summer slide. Somehow just build more time into the calendar for either all the students or at least some of the students. And so I went there to tell that story of, of how this one city was trying to make up for the lost time. That extended calendar came from a few places, some school board members, some parents, white people in particular appeared to be more opposed, some teachers. Why did they oppose it? There were various uh, arguments uh, against the extended calendar and the shorter sh summer break, including very you know, practical things like, well, we already scheduled our summer vacation. We've already got a summer job. Um, we don't. You know, we don't want to have to change those plans. Then, but then there was a more general sense of why are we change, disrupting the way things have always been done at a time when there's already been so much disruption. We just need to get everyone back to normal, back to the normal routine. The ar argument on the other side, of course, was that this is exactly the, the moment when we need to, to do something different because we've lost so much. This is exactly the time when we try, need to, to really just completely change the way that things have always been done. 
because what was done before simply is not going to be enough to make up all of that lost ground. And in the end, roughly 1,000 of the district's 22,000 students will be in school this summer for those extra 20 days that are on the calendar. What's your takeaway from the struggle to approve this one pilot project for such a small number of students? Yes, in the end, only two schools ended up getting this one this one pilot. Um, such a very, very small kind of step forward for, for this one city. And to me, it just was a sign of, of how, really how strong the complacency and the inertia have become on this issue. Um, there's been, we're, we're almost not really even really talking about it anymore. There's been, it's been really striking how much the national educational debate has shifted to culture war issues, um, how much that's been driving the, the media coverage of schools. Meanwhile, we're seeing this apocalyptic crisis um, in, in learning loss and this widening achievement gap. And, and there's just been this real reluctance to, to just look it in the eye and recognize how much we have to do. Um, so, but meanwhile, I did see some of these educators in Richmond who, who, who did recognize this and were, and were fighting as hard as they could to move forward. And it's gonna be very interesting to see how these couple schools in this one city now fare with these extra 20 days that they're getting. That's Alec McGillis with new reporting in The New Yorker and ProPublica. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.